fighting for this generation and the next generation. Most of us here are privileged. Some aren't. I will admit I am privileged. When I walk out here, I'm not afraid to be pulled in a white van and taken across the border. So I'm doing everything I can, all of us here, to make sure that we collectively moving our agenda. We'll get a little bit this generation, but the next generation will be better. So I just wanted to couch this really in a generational fight, not trying to say this is the best means, but now it's an involvement of a national uh, uh, agenda. Thank you. Hello, so I'm gonna talk to you, I noticed I'm joining the introduction of few of you from, were from organizations. How many of those organizations are C3 organizations? C3, how about C4? Any, C4, okay. Well, for, even for those of you who do not belong to organizations, you should uh, you know, be aware of the tools that you can have to have your voice heard. Uh, there, there are, as, as, as uh, Ramon mentioned, you know, 527 organizations, he's discussed a little bit about that, but 501c3 organizations um, and 501c4 organizations can get more involved. 501c3 in the political process. 501c3 organizations, let, let me just say right up front, are limited by the IRS and what they can and cannot do ver, uh, in terms of political spending. You know, they cannot support or oppose candidates. That just, if you do, your, your tax exemption status is gonna get revoked. However, you can, you can form uh, 501c4 sister organizations or affiliates of your, uh, of your organization and you can use that organization with the appropriate controls and protections between the two organizations. You can use that organization, the C4, which is basically does everything a C3 can do, plus social welfare and lobbying activity, extra lobbying activity. You can use that organization now to uh, support or oppose candidates. And this is, two weeks ago, this wasn't true. And the, the only difference between now and two weeks is a Supreme Court decision called Citizens United, where the Supreme Court says corporations can use their general treasury, their accounts, to support or oppose candidates. Now they can. And, and even though it was targeting, uh, well, the decision was focused on corporations, you know, the Exxons and everything like that, the, the big organizations, the, the case was about a 501c4 organization and how it thought it was prevented from participating in an election and running a movie about Hillary Clinton right before an election. Um, so the court says, you know what, the prohibition, the, the restriction in federal law that says they couldn't do that is unconstitutional. Now they can. And so now your C4 organizations, if you have one, or if you want to form one, can use your bank accounts and your, 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 your general bank account to engage in the types of activity on this issue. So you can now go out there and say support or oppose Congressman Smith because he doesn't support immigration reform. You can use your, your newsletters and emails to do that in your email blast. Um, there are some reporting restrictions and they're not extensive, but they are out there um, as part of this new allowance, a new, new permission that you, you have now to engage in this type of activity. But um, it's something you should all be aware of because it gives you an extra tool you didn't have two weeks ago. Um, and it would be a shame if you just if just the big corporations took advantage of this and left your all your voices just silent because you either weren't aware of it or didn't want to utilize it. Um, some of the restrictions on that, and I'll go over them very briefly, are this. C4s still can, if you want to have a political organization, uh, uh, you have a C4 organization, your, the primary purpose cannot be political spending. Once it is, then your C4 status gets taken away. Uh, also, you cannot coordinate your messages, your political campaigning messages with a candidate or the party. Mm -hmm. So you have to make your decisions independently of those organizations, of those, those entities, the candidates and the parties. So you could, on your own, develop a message, spending out of your own general treasury account and, and produce an email or, or newsletter or a radio ad that says, you know, vote against congressmen, whoever, because he doesn't support our issues and, or so on. So that's that's one important thing uh, that you can do. Uh, and, and hopefully we'll see more organizations taking advantage of this because it gives them more opportunity they just didn't have two weeks ago. 
Finally, the, the five, a uh, couple things. The 527 organizations are <coughs> that uh, Ramon mentioned are limited, as he said, in terms of what they can't say. They can't go the extra step and say vote for this person, but they can talk about somebody's record and somebody's position on an issue right before an election. And the good thing about that is they can raise money from anybody they want. They can raise pretty much anybody they want. Um, corporations, nonprofits, and other wealthy individuals, and they're not hampered by campaign contribution limit limits. Um, so as opposed to political action committees, PACs, on the federal level, you can only raise money from you know individuals and other political committees. You can't raise money from, from uh, corporations or labor unions. But anyways, those are some really basic tools that I want you to be aware of. Um, and as you develop your own strategies for how to get involved in the immigration debate, whether it's through participating um, in, uh, in coalition with other organizations or developing your own and becoming your own voice, um, amplifying your own <coughs> voice, you should think about that opportunity that this new decision, Citizens United, gives to your organization. If you have any questions, it's a it's a very uh, newly developing area. I'd be happy to answer them at any time.